I'm going to start off with a fairly complicated example. You know that the first step is always to move things into the frequency domain. So I'm going to start you off with something in the frequency domain. You'll notice with these that op amp circuits don't use inductors. You'll, I don't think you'll ever see an op amp circuit with an inductor. In practice, when you're making electronics, inductors are large and not very ideal. Capacitors are much closer to being ideal and they're physically much smaller and they're less likely to interact with each other on a circuit board because there's almost no electric field outside of these plates, but with an inductor, there's a large magnetic field that extends outside. So if you've got two inductors close by, those each of their magnetic fields can interact with each other and cause undesired crosstalk. Whereas with two capacitors, you can mount them really close and that electric field is just right inside them, barely comes out. And so they don't interfere with each other. You can in fact use a capacitor in the feedback loop of a op amp to make it look like an inductor mathematically. Okay, so let's just do a quick check here. Um, for this circuit, we have resistors in the frequency domain. We have capacitors. The capacitors all have a negative imaginary um, impedance. So that all looks right. And let's start analyzing it. So Jesse, how would you begin? Uh, first, I'd see if I could combine anything. Yes, absolutely right. So are there any resistors or capacitors here in parallel or in series? Jesse? Doesn't look like it. Yeah, there's, there's not. Let's see, Kyle, you're next. What would be your next step to do? And take a look at these, at these golden rules. You're, you're going to use, I want you to use KCL to analyze. Well, first you'd have to figure out the um, no voltages, or primarily the no voltage entering the, um, well, entering, but around the inverting input. Right. You're going to do a KCL, and you're going to do a series of KCLs. And you're going to take a look at these golden rules that say V plus is equal to V minus. So we're going to start off by identifying all of our unknowns. We know that this is a zero volt source because it's connected to ground. JT, how about up here? What is this node going to be? Known, Jesus unknown, as well. that's going to have to be zero volts by, by this rule. Um, John Lightfoot, how about, how about over here? Will that just be one volt? Just one. Um, so one at an angle of zero is just a real number one. So what we want to do is call this one V sub one, because we don't know what it is. Um, how about Bobby, what's left? Or is there anything left? There's the node for the negative feedback where it goes to negative J10 to the capacitor and 10 resistor. You mean out here? Yes. And that is an unknown node and we've already called it V out. So oh, that okay. one, that one will just keep as, that one will just keep as V out. And now I think we've got them all. Now we know that we've got these one, two, three, four, five nodes, but we're not going to do KCL at all of them. This is where the magic happens, figuring out where we're going to do the KCL. So we need to do KCL to drive as many equations as we have unknowns. How many unknowns do we have, Pavel? Two. Just two, that's right. We don't know V out and we don't know V1. So we need to get two good nodal equations. Now let's, let's do them. We, we can't do it here because we know what it is. We know we need to do one here at V1. Um, do we want to do one at V out? Linda? Do we need to? You need to, but do we want to do one at V out? I don't think we need to do it at V out. Well, we need to get another one, but we never do it at the outputs because we could, we could figure out what this current is going to the left. We could figure out what this current is to the left, but you can't figure out what the current is coming out of the op amp. So we are not going to do it at V out. Instead, there's only two other choices we've, we, we've got. We've got these two. This one isn't going to be very interesting because this one is going to be zero going into here. So it must be zero out. There's nothing there. So this is going to be where we do our second KCL. 
once you get those two things, you've really got the whole, the rest of the problem is just, is just turning the crank. So just to review to how we got here, we start off by always identifying from, from this rule that the two inputs are the same. If we didn't know what this was, instead of saying zero volts, we might call this V2 and this would have to be V2 as well. We know we never do it at V out. And then we just identify all the other unknowns that all the other unknown nodes we have. And hopefully the number of nodes that are left that we need to find, not including the output, will equal the number of unknowns we need to find. Let's do it. Let's do it at V1 first. John Lightfoot, for V1, what's the current flowing to the left of V1? V1 minus one over two. Yep. And Jack, how about the current flowing down out of V1 going this way? V1 um, over negative J5. That's right. So that's the current flowing down. We've got left, we've got down. Um, how about to the right? Uh, Pavel, just to make V1, it V1 over 10. That's it. So that's going to be V1 over 10. And I'll do the up one, which is V1 minus V out over 10. And all of that has to be equal to zero. That's our first equation. And then let's do our second. So we're going to do it around zero volts. So let's do it moving to the left. What do we have? Uh, Linda? So from here, going to the left. Negative V1 over 10. Yeah, zero minus V1 over 10. Going to the right is going to be uh, stone. Um, it'd be right? zero minus V out over negative J10. Okay, so you're, gonna, you're doing it up, which is zero minus V out over negative J10. And uh, JT, what is it going to the right into the op amp? It'd be zero. Just and, current. and that's going to be zero because there's no current. So the whole thing has to be equal to zero. All right, at this point, you've got all the equations, you've got all the unknowns. The only question is, how are you gonna solve it? And that depends on what kind of calculator you have. Um, if you've so, got... So I'm sorry, I was just curious. Um, I, I thought VI wasn't going to be established as something we would really use. You're not gonna do, you are not gonna do KCL at V out. No, that's true. We never did a KCL at V out. We'd have okay. an unknown going into it plus this current, which would be V out minus zero for minus J10 cool. plus this current. And since we don't know what the current going out of, out of the op amp is, we can't solve for it. Okay, so we can so, use V out as a voltage node. We can't you use have to, current. Because okay. this is what we want to find. In the end, this is what we want to find. So there's two ways we can, we can do this. Sure. One is if you've got a, yeah, go on. Is this only possible because there's two feedback loops? Nope. Could you have done this if there was only one feedback loop is really what my question is. Oh, yeah. And you could do it if there's seven feedback loops. You just okay. have more unknowns. I'm giving you a relatively complicated problem because it's nice to see a complicated problem once in a while. Um, yeah. The same exact approach works no matter what. And the approach, once again, is to make sure that you don't duplicate unknowns at your inputs. Whatever one is, make sure it's the same as the other voltage. And because this gives us an extra equation here, it means we don't have to write the extra equation at the output. And then it's going to be KCL at every other node. And it will always work out, if you've done it correctly, that the number of unknowns will equal the number of equations. So there's two ways we can do this. If you've got a good calculator, the simple kind of boneheaded way is to just ask yourself how many V1s we've got here. So there's one tenth from this guy. There's uh, one over minus J5 over here. There's one tenth here. Um, there's one tenth here. How much V out do we have? There's one tenth from this element. And what are our constants here? The only constant is up here, which is minus one tenth. Pull it to the right and we get equals one tenth. And then for V2, Oh, I'm sorry, for the next equation, we handle that one the same way. We say for V2, let's see, how much V1 do we have? We have minus one tenth V1. How much V out do we have? 
over here, the minus and the minus cancel, and so we've got one over J10, and there's no constants anywhere here, so it'll equal zero. So then you can place that into your calculator directly, all of this, and you can simplify this, right? Um, so one tenth plus one tenth plus one tenth is three tenths. Um, I think I'd probably move that J up to the top. It's easier to put in. As Stone noticed, if you put this in your calculator, the only way to plug that in would be saying one over parentheses minus I five, close parentheses. But if you change it into the simpler J over five, it's just, I'm sorry, it's just gonna be your I over five, no parentheses needed. All right, so for the next one, we'd have, let's see, minus one tenth, minus one tenth. Uh, I'd say that's gonna be minus J over 10. You don't need to put the J on the top again. It just makes it less keystrokes when you put in your calculator. And for me, that's the part that's gonna trip me up. And when you plug that in, you will get that V1 and V out are going to be equal to 0 0.316, an angle of minus 18.4 degrees, and 0 0.316 at an angle of 71.6 degrees. And the one you want to find is your out. So this is your answer. And since I gave you your input in the frequency domain, the best you can do is to give the output in the frequency domain as a, as a phaser. If you did not have that kind of calculator, then you'd have to do a little bit of algebra. Then you can still do that. But the way that I would do it is, is I'd say, hey, this equation over here just has V1 and V out. So I bet we could solve that for V1, and then we could substitute it into here. So if we did that, we would have something like, uh, let's move this V1 to the right. We'd have V1 over 10, moving this to the right of the equals, equals the minus sign cancels. And so we'd have V out over minus J10. I'd multiply both sides by 10, and I'd get uh, V1 equals, the 10 goes away, I'd bring the J up to the top, JV out. Sir, don't the, the minus signs cancel out so it wouldn't be minus J10, it would just be V out over J10? Oh yeah, you're right, thank you. And so this would be minus J V out, that's right. Um, so, sir, also, did you mean to write um, mm -hmm. V2 V out? Like then, I was going to say the same as you no voltages. Oh yeah, you're right, thank you. What Kyle is saying is, I've written v, V2 down here, but I don't have any V2 over here. I guess I should say V at the minus sign. That's a clearer, that's a clearer way of putting it. And I should have put a colon here. Thanks, Kyle. Okay, so then we could place that up here. And I think I'd multiply everything through by 10 to make this easier. So I'd get V1 minus one plus V1. Let's see, that would be, Multiplying this by 10, I'd get two V1. And then I put my J up on top to give me this. Then we'd have V1 plus V1 minus V out equals zero. So then we could group all of our V1s together here and say that would be one, two, three, plus over here, plus uh, J2. And then all that minus V out equals one. And then we could substitute this into here and get minus J V out, three plus J2 minus V out, equals one. Now we've got one equation, one unknown with a little bit more algebra, we can solve it. I'd be glad to do, maybe I should just do that. So you can see, let's continue. Let's continue this down. We'd have, um, we'd multiply through and get minus J three uh, V out. 
and then we get j times j is minus one times minus one is plus one. So all that just becomes a uh, v out times two minus v out equals one. So now we have v out of two minus one is one minus j three equals one. So therefore v out has to equal one over one minus j3. Let me just, and if you plug this into your calculators, you'll also get 0 0.316 at an angle of 71.6 degrees, which is the same thing as we got below. So it can be done without using complex matrices, but man, those, those matrices make your work a whole lot, lot easier. And I'm much less likely to make a mistake here than I would doing this will we have access to um to matlab when we take our exam no you, you'll have access to your calculators it's our calculators and not matlab to your calculators and not to matlab that's right for this particular frequency i haven't told you what frequency it is when i moved it over in the frequency domain but is it increasing your signal or is it decreasing the magnitude of your signal at this particular frequency anyway it's a little hard to tell with just the increase. angle honestly Shouldn't be hard to tell at all. You're you've got a decreasing. You're, you're you're putting in a magnitude of one. You're getting out a magnitude of zero point three. So is it increasing or decreasing? Decreasing. Definitely decreasing by about a third. So you know, roughly by by thirty one point six percent. So um, at this particular frequency, it's decreasing it. Now, if you put in a different frequency, all of these impedances would be different. And so what the magnitude would be, would be different. It might increase it at certain frequencies. It might decrease it at others. It would be really interesting if you could quickly evaluate what this circuit does at a whole bunch of different frequencies and plot it, plot the magnitude here versus these different frequencies to see if it tends to pass high frequencies better or low frequencies better.